I'm Larry McReynolds. Hard to believe it's been a year since Seymour was here in Las Vegas, 2014. And for the last two years, I've been the star. Something tells me that's not going to be the case this year. Leah Pritchett, top field drag racer. Leah, welcome to Seymour. Thank you so much, Larry. I am stoked to go inside and see what SEMA 2014 has in store for us. Well, we've made our way into the SEMA show, and you know, we love finding displays and horsepower. That's what she does is all about. That's what I used to do is all about. And I Liv, love it. This is a chassis dyno. You know, a Sprint Cup Series engine makes about 900 horsepower, which means a little over 800 at the rear wheels. I never drove a race car, but since it was strapped down, they used to let me drive it on the chassis dyno. Do you think, would your top fuel car fit on this? Well, number one, no, it wouldn't. <laughs> little, little short. And number two, probably wouldn't be able to withhold the amount of horsepower that our top fuel dragster has. We are reaching upwards of 10,000 horsepower. So Larry, I mean, I know this is a great dyno, but I don't think it could hold it. Well, like I say, I drove a Sprint Cup Series car on a chassis dyno. I don't even know if I want to be in the same room if you did put your top fuel car on this chassis dyno. Well, I'm not sure it would work, but, uh, but I'm sure it's great. I'm sure it works for a lot of other applications. And it's a great start to SEMA 2014 right now. Let's go look something else. Okay. Coming to you live from the most glitzed out car we have seen yet. We're here at the Exalta booth and I can kind of see myself rolling in this thing. What do you see? I can see myself going down Rodeo Boulevard in Hollywood just sporting this. But you know, we have creative paint schemes in NASCAR. Do y'all have anything at all like this in NHRA? Back in the day, absolutely. We used to have some of the best paint schemes, but now we've reverted to wraps and uh, this is pretty. I like glitz, I like glam. I love just pour on all that heavy metal flake. That's me and I'm kind of a sucker for pinstripes. So this would be me all the way, but I think it would be a little bit heavy to put on a top fuel car. You know, we are all about weight. Oh yeah, now this is a 1965 Chevrolet Impala. If I'm gonna hang out with you the next two days, I gotta share a secret with you. I was six years old when this car was built. You were how years old when this car was built? Six years old. I wasn't even a thought back then. Ah. Larry, I gotta be honest with you. There's some uh, of this no pun intended. No pun intended. I really don't know if I'd be going out on a date with this thing. I don't think it has any AC, any heating, but it does look pretty cool. But it's a rat rod. Have you ever ridden in a rat rod? I, I have not. I've seen tons of them. And in the nostalgia scene, they're very, very popular. And of course, looks like it's been in Indianapolis in the snow with the rust for a little while. This, this would be perfect because my wife accuses me all the time of starting projects and never finishing them. This looks like to me that it's not been finished, but how can you go wrong with something that has Honest Charlie written across? You can't. You can't go wrong at all. And it looks like they have picked pieces from different cars throughout the last decades to get what this is right now. I've got to say it's really pretty cool, but uh, not quite sure it's super safe. Well, yeah, I, I guess it's a Ford cab from the late 30s, but the gentleman with Will Ventiques was telling us that they took a bunch of pieces from a bunch of other cars, and this thing could drive right out of here and hit the streets. You want to take a ride? Cool. Yeah, let's go. Let's all see right. if we can get in. Should be filming. <laughs> Jeez, Larry! I didn't do that. <laughs> well, I swear I didn't do that. It can't be a real rat rod. I see we're going to get just fine. We're already arguing. <laughs> Larry, I don't think your first date's going very. Yeah, this don't is, have a good feeling about it. I need a milkshake or something. Let's go to Sonic. We'll continue our tour here in SEMA. And Lee, I found something that was built before I was born. How about this replica of a 1958 Ferrari? But the unique thing, it has a motor motorcycle engine. And these guys, Brian and them, you, you guys set a land speed record with this at Bonneville, didn't you? We did, that's right. Yeah, it was a, it was a blast. It's a, it's a great little engine. Uh, we It was a hit at Bonneville. Uh, all the racers out there and everyone just, they, they love seeing an engine like this. It's American, it's push rod. Um, we went real fast. Uh, Leah, 300 plus miles per hour with four tires. Do you want to go close to 200 with just two? I've got to say I'm going to stay inside my comfort level with a roll cage, although this is a beautiful piece. Obviously very fast, but uh, 
No roll cage means no bueno for me. Yeah, I'm not going to go that fast. Two wheels, four wheels, eight wheels. I'm the guy in the interstate in the left lane with my blinker on, probably that everybody's blowing their horn at. So I'll let I'll let the speed stick with you guys. Okay. You know, Leah and NASCAR, all the gains that teams have made in speed. Yeah, it's been about horsepower and aerodynamics and handling and all the things that goes into making a car go around a corner. But in my opinion, one reason that cars are so much quicker today at the short tracks in NASCAR is because of the brake package. But I found it interesting when I hung out with you at Charlotte, you talked a lot about the brakes on that top fuel car. Absolutely. I think a lot of people don't think about braking when it comes to drag racing. Just about speed and going fast and stopping is important. But what's most important to me about braking is really my staging procedure. I'm very adamant about having really tight, tight brakes as soon as I grab it because I want to just bump in very, very, very shallow stage and you can't do that if you have squishy brakes. So we bleed them all the time and can you guess how many pounds of brake pressure do you think I have when I'm staging? Probably a lot more than a NASCAR Sprint Cup Series car. Uh, I have about, I pull about seven to eight hundred pounds of brake pressure on my car right before I stage to hold back the 10,000 horsepower that we have. So it's kind of a lot. So brakes are very important. Even though we like to go fast, we, we like to stop. Now that's a lot of brake pressure for somebody as small as you to try to hang on to. I have guns. <laughs> I got them. So do I. <laughs>